Dr. Ayora Jim here, Grace International Church. It's an opportunity of a lifetime that you allow me to come into your life, into your home, and into your situations. Granting me your, some of your time and your audience is profoundly humbling. But what I want you to understand, though, is that God uses vessels because vessels are all God has to use. Beyond me, understand that this word is from the Lord. All we are are mail carriers. God is a letter writer. May his word richly bless you and strengthen you today as you open up your heart to receive from him. You see, life is a relay race. When one generation runs their race to finish, they pass on the baton to the next generation. My prayer has always been, may we never pass the baton to the next generation worse than we received it. Ah, thank God that when he put the earth in orbit, it is said by science that if the earth moved an inch out of its orbit, life will not be possible on earth. But the earth has been in orbit year after year, thousands of years. Shall men give into your bosom? God is looking for men that will be an answer to somebody's dilemma. Raise your hand and say, God, you've got me. When life backs you up and backs you up, it is only a matter of time that you are going to get into God's mercy and God's goodness because God got your back. We put it up, we'll go through. It says from verse 1, And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, Tishbite is from, he's from Tishbe, so he's called a Tishbite, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. Now there's a premise to this verse 1. The premise is found in chapter 16 from verse 32 to 33 when Ahab the king had started to create an idol before him and worshipped. He worshipped Baal and Baal's uh, girlfriend, Asherah. <laughs> and you know, they, they said they were the god of fertility. What's an idol? An idol is anything that's a, 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 a place, per, a thing, anything, like a noun. That is misappropriately given honor that ought to be due God. Put in a simple way. It's a good thing sometimes, but its use is put to an abuse as relates to God. Abuse is just an abnormal use of anything. You see, in other parts of the world, they will bow to, a, to wood, to stone, to different things, but we have our own thing too. American Idol. Praise the Lord. For some it's the job. For some it's... Uh, uh, a person, for some it's prestige, for some it's power, for some it's popularity, for some it's pleasure, for some, you know, whatever that thing is that you have given the place beyond God has become an idol. And I want to say to somebody that you see, whenever you put anything before God, pastor shared our testimony. He didn't tell you about how in New York, when we started, when we started the New York church, God had asked us to do something that you know for the rest of my life I'll remember you see pastor talked to us about when you give a gift you don't remember what you give on January 1st uh, 1977 those of you that were born then but if you have something that you gave for the rest of your life you will remember it's because it was a sacrificial gift the Lord asked us to go to the people we got a bank loan and no sooner pastor discovered that the first payment was not to the principle of the loan, but it was to the interest. And we were going to pay over 30 years, and he calculated how much we would have paid over the main loan. He said, oh, no, Lord, not on my watch. And so we were to go to the people and ask them to loan to the church, payable when able, with no interest. 
How many of us want to participate in that kind of loan? Payable when able at no interest. Them folks in New York, they must be blessed or crazy. What are the two? Because guess what? They responded. And then the Lord said to Pastor and I, you first. And we're like, you first said everything you had in your account. Turn it over. All that savings of yours, turn it over. We did. In two years, every single person who had given payable when able was paid back in full. New York went through, or, or the United States went through one of the biggest fall in the money market. And people who had funds in all kind of savings lost the greatest that they had ever lost in that time. God was just trying to protect the people at Grace. Somebody bless his name and protect their resources. You see, God never will take from anyone to, to diminish you. If God asks you for anything, it's because he wants to bring increase in your life. Amen. And the next verse we, we, we read on. So here, here goes. These people had put something before God and they were reaping the reward of idolatry. Get thee hence and turn thee eastward and hide. And the word of the Lord came unto him saying, get and hide thyself at the brook Cherith. That, that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook and have commanded the ravens to feed you there. God commanded ravens to feed you there. Number one secret of God's provision. Hope you're listening. If you can think it, if you can dream it, then it is too small for God. <laughs> you think your dream is gargantuan. You think it is gigantic. I'm here to let somebody know that he is the God that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above. Now look at those terms. Everything that you could ever think or ask. He's not talking about everything that you have written down or calculated or, you know, put together that you can do. He says, if it has come into your mind, if you could think it, I am the God that sees your thoughts from afar off. I am that God that before the thoughts even made it into your mind, I see it. I can do more than that. I can beat your wildest imagination and your biggest dream. Now, I want you to see a God that takes a prophet and tells him, I'll lead you to the brook Cherith, and I'll have the ravens feed you. Do you know what ravens were? I don't know if you have the picture on the slide. Please, please put up that picture of the raven if you, if you had it up. Uh -huh. So raven, we're going to be the chef. Said, I'll bring you meat and bread, a sandwich, breakfast, lunch, and dinner brought by a bird. If you have a picture of that raven, please put it up on the slide. Deuteronomy 4, 14, 11 to 14, talks about ravens as being one of the uh, birds that were unclean and that the Jews were never to touch. But then God, how then is the raven the one that's going to feed this man of God? You know why? When God is your source, lesson number two, it beats and defies every human imagination when god is your source he has the ability to bring the most magnificent out of the most mundane things of life he is that god that will take ordinary put his extra and make you an extraordinary that god that takes natural and puts a super on it that super is god himself somebody bless his name in the house and bring out a supernatural out of you Yes, raven that nobody else would think of. You see, many of us have boxed God. The reason why we haven't stepped into all that he has for us is because we have put him in a box to say, this is how far, this is how it used to be done. This is the only way. Oh, I shouldn't be going there. And God says, jump. Tell somebody, jump. Ah, he's going to hold you. He will sustain you. We have limited him. Some of us have had the Spirit of God say things in our minds and we've told him, no, 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 that couldn't be me. It's probably my neighbor he was talking to. How on earth could that happen to a person like me? Beat yourself and say, yes, it's going to happen to a person like me. It is going to happen to a person like me. I want you to look at this. Let's read on. And the ravens came. Yeah, see that bird? I know some people in my family that if that kind of bird surfaced near them, a Joe. 
See, every black bird in, in some parts of my country are witches. Amen. <laughs> God is your source. And when he is the source, the sad truth is that many people think their job, their employer, their bank account is their source. Oh, no. God is the source. They are just resources. Re means to, re, re means to give it out again. They all belong to God. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and all that dwells therein. Everything here, including the atomic bomb, it belongs to God. And may I tell somebody something? Even the devil is God's devil. A raven may have been a, bear, a bird that should not and should never come near a man of God like Elijah. But guess what? Even the devil is God's devil. Go ask Job. Job 1 says that when the sons of God came out, the, Lucifer came along too. Says, where have you been? He going to and fro and seeking the, who he could devour. Meaning if he has to look, there's some of you that are just simply untouchable. I want you to know, you, those of you in the house, untouchable, let me hear you holler and amen. amen. If the devil has to look for who he can devour, it means that there's some people that just are untouchable to him. That's who God says you are. God has power over all, including the devil. He says, no jot of hair on your head will fall without my notice and without my attention. I am the one that told him you can only come this far. I set the limits and I set the boundaries. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you can bear. So he would use the devil to bring out heaven. Hey, somebody say amen. Number three, I want you to notice. The Bible says, Philippians 4.19, you could write this down, first slide. Uh, I skip, you could go back to the first one. Philippians 4.19 says that God is your source, that the God that you serve will supply all of your needs, not according to your standard, not according to your family heritage, but according to whose riches? According to his riches in Christ. Praise the Lord. Now I want to say Luke 6.38, it says, Principle number three, if you're writing down, I want you to notice. Give what it is that you want. Let's read on on this story. The story goes about the brook, and after a while, the brook dries up. The brook dries up. In verse four, the ravens brought him meat. In verse seven, and it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Anybody ever been in that place where somebody told you, oh, come to Jesus and not, you'll never lose your job and you lost your job. Come to Jesus and you'll never lose your house and you lost the house. <laughs> Anybody been there? But can I tell you something? God never allows anything to be taken away just for the sake of it. I came to this country from a place where all year round there was rainfall and plants grew all around. And I learned that when winter came, all the trees looked like they were dead. But guess what? They're just hibernating. Tell somebody God is just causing you to hibernate. Because guess what? The springtime of your life is coming. If God takes it away, it's because he has something better. See, when you were in elementary, you had sticks. How many of us had sticks where we counted with? One plus one, two, and you put two sticks. But when you got to high school, didn't it look ridiculous if your mama packed those sticks in your backpack? There's some things that have to go because it's promotion time. Somebody bless his name. When God moves you to the next level, some things in your life will just have to go. Bless his name. And so the ravens left. And after the ravens left, I want you to see what happens. And God said to him, arise, verse 9, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Zidon, Zarephath was actually the place where the idol worship was the greatest. And he says, go there, for I have commanded a widow there to sustain you. Doesn't God have a sense of humor? Because the way you know it is God. Pastor Ayo said, the way I know that God called me into this. He went in Nigeria. He skipped the house of their bishop, the archbishop. Skip the house of the evangelist and went to the house of Alaji. A G O Ajimoto come to look for a pastor for Grace International Church. 
It had to be God. I remember when we were in medical school, one day the chief imams of Lagos arrived in school to look for him. They were coming to convince him to get back to Islam. But somebody blessed the name of Jesus because God had this. And you and you and you and you and you and me in mind. When he went in there and said, yes, you. Omalafa. <laughs> Omalaji. That is the one that I want. He has a way. Of all people that God will choose to provide for the man of God, a widow. A widow. Not just a widow, a widow with a son. And the first thing the man of God calls out to the widow, well, let me see if, but God, is this really you? How does this relate? Uh, uh, uh. And so he calls out, uh, could you please get me some water first? Well, let me test and see, like some of us do. Get me some water. And then he decides to see, is this really the person God wants to provide for me? He goes, while you are at it, get me a muscle. Get me something to eat. And the widow retorts by saying, well, I got my last meal. Those of you that come from a certain part of the world, before they took people to their final execution, criminals, they will give them their last meal. And I will, I will eat and die with my son. If it was in today's generation, imagine what CNN, Channel 2, and all the news stations will have to say about this man of God. Woo! Imagine what the news headlines will have to say about a wicked man of God who go to a poor widow's house, go take her last food with her little boy. But look what the word of God says. The man of God says that according to God's word, and she said, as the Lord thy God lives, I have not a cake, verse 12, but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil and cruise, and behold, I'm gathering it two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat and die. And Elijah said unto her, fear not, go and do as thou hast said. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal, shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. Somebody sitting in here, your barrel will never cease in the name of Jesus. God is bringing you to a place where his supply will be exceedingly abundantly above everything that you could ever dream or ask of him. God is your source. I want you to understand that there is a prophetic that is implied in all of this there's a prophetic that is implied in all of this I say that to say this praise the Lord a story is told in 2nd Kings 7 and I'm just gonna for time skip around just to paraphrase on the story 2nd Kings chapter number 7 his protege Elijah and then Elisha and then in verse 1 Elisha said hear ye the word of the Lord thus saith the Lord tomorrow about this time shall a measure of of, of fine flour be sold for a, sh uh, a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate. Now you notice that in each of these instances there was famine, there was dryness, there was nothing. Now I want you to know that when we were doing Grace Event Center, I don't know what, it felt like somebody hit you a blow in the center of your belly. March 2020 when they said everything was shut down. I immediately knew that it was the devil from the pits of hell trying to stop the purpose of God. There are churches that are still struggling as a result. But I come to say that God does not allow anything come our way except for the fact that he has something greater and better. He told me in that time, Romans 8, 28, he says that I am the God that is able to make all things work together for good to them that love him. All things means both the good, the bad, and the ugly things of life. God, when he's said and done, is able to put it all together. He didn't say, I'm able to make all good things work together for good. No, he said all things. So what the devil meant for harm, tell somebody, God is able to turn it around for my good. He's a God of a turnaround. We wanted to despair. There were days the builder will come and say, oh, I have a draw. And I'll look at the bank account and I'm like, huh, Lord. And I had to just tell him, well, God. I'm not responsible for this. You did it before and you're going to do it again. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know that I know. And before the day came, the money was in the account and we paid for it. Seven million, no bank involved. Somebody bless his name. That God. 
And I want you to remember that the God who will do it for one, he will do it for the other. When God talks about the church, the church is not the building. The church is you and you and you and you. You are his body. When he says, I'm prospering the house, he's talking about you. I want you to take a look at yourself and look at where you started from with him. Look at where you are now. I want you to know and appreciate that, thank God Almighty, you're not where you used to be. Praise the Lord. You may not be where you dream or hope to be. But I want you to celebrate your tomorrows. Because of a surety, the God that you have is a God that when all is said and done, he will surely perform and perfect everything that concerns you. And the story goes in this story about how God caused the military, the Syrians, to hear a noise in verse 4 of chariots and a noise of horses, even the noise of great hosts. And they said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of, and they named everything. Can I tell you something? Your enemies, God will cause them to hear a sound that will cause disorder amongst them. The man of God said yesterday when there's disorder, it is because things are in order, but they've been put out of order. And God knows how to bring it back together for your good. God caused a little disorder in their midst. And they said, these soldiers ran away. And when they ran away, these, they, there were three men. Oh, I love this. There were, and, and, and when these lepers came in, they said there were some lepers. Let, 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 me, let me look at verse 8. It says there were lepers who came into the uttermost part of the camp, and they went into one of the tents and did eat. These lepers found themselves wondering, well... <laughs> we are lepers we are not allowed in the council of everybody but let me ask you a question lepers were people that were rejects of the society <laughs> and when God had caused the army that was coming against Israel to hear a noise that caused confusion and scatter tell somebody they scrammed your enemies will scatter before you in the name of Jesus they may come before you one way but they will flee before you seven ways when all is said and done Lepers, not the chief priests, not the uh, field marshals, not the navy, but lepers. One thing again to let you know that yes, men and society may have discounted you. Your lineage may have said no, not you, but God says yes, you, you're the one that I'm looking for for my blessing. Your background, yes, you may have gone through a family, a bruise, hurt. You're the kid that was raised by your mama, by yourself. But God says, it's you that I'm talking to. It's you that I have for my purpose. You may not have been born with a silver spoon, but I, your God, will put you over when all is said and done in the name of Jesus. Your God will do it. And these lepers, the Bible says, walked in. And when they went in, the soldiers had run away and left all their treasure. Now, I want to ask you a question. When last did you see people going to war and they carried their Rolex watch, their jewelry, their gold? Because these guys got so much wealth from the things that the soldiers ran away from. Now, God will put confusion in the minds of your enemy in the name of Jesus. When all is said and done, people who do not know God will feed you in Jesus' name. You don't want to hear the testimony of this place. We had people when we built this building, the secretaries in the office will tell us how people walked off the street, walked in our lobby and put an offering and said, we're bringing it to church. 12 midnight, one of the days, Pastor and I, the Lord laid it in our heart to come into this place and pray. We prayed. As we went around driving around, the seventh time, a couple met us at 2 a.m. in the morning outside, right in the front, port Coche, and said, God said to come and give you this offering, $2,000. God will cause men to do things that will utterly blow them. They don't know why, but for your sake. Stand up to your feet and let us just give him a praise. And let's just make a declaration. Tell somebody, God is your source. Ah, do not depend on prestige, profession, people, popularity, positions, power. None of that can take you anywhere. Let's take this declaration, I declare in the name of the Lord. That the zeal of God would consume me. The purpose of God will be established in my life. I declare in the name of the Lord that I am blessed. Everything that is necessary to fulfill God's purpose in my life, God will bring into my reach. I will not lack, I will not want in any good thing. With long life will he satisfy me. He will show me his peace, he will give me his favor. 
God bless you. Now I want you to do something if you do not know the Lord Jesus. And you're saying, Pastor, I hear you, but somehow I know my life ain't right. I want us to bow together and pray together. I want you to invite him and say, God, I give you power. We are so thankful for the opportunity to come into your homes or your office or wherever it is you're viewing this broadcast from. It's an opportunity that we are so eternally grateful for. Thank you for allowing us to come to you. Now, if you don't know Jesus, I want to pray with you. It's a simple prayer and it will come into your heart. You can just look at me. Repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Come and be my Savior. I receive you as my Lord. If you're praying that prayer for the first time, kindly call our church office. We will love to pray with you. We will love to get you information to help you be discipled and understand the full impl implications of what you prayed and guide you into helping you to fully stand in the knowledge and the fullness of what you prayed for. If this message has been a blessing to you, you have the opportunity as well as the responsibility to help making it come so that we can keep bringing more word from the Lord. Uh, you can get the full sermon, the full message in its entirety on our social media address page, on our YouTube page. It's there at the bottom of your screen. And while there, be kind to like, subscribe, and share. And I want to say, if you're ever in the Houston area, we will be so glad to welcome you at Grace International for one of our scintillating services. We look forward to seeing you. Please remember these words from Romans chapter 5, verse 17. The B part said, Those who have received the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness shall rule and reign in Christ Jesus. We love Amen. you so much. We love God you. Bless you. Hallelujah. Yeah.